Hello everyone, uh, I am Michael Cristian, President of the Shane Bryan Fan Group on Facebook. Greetings to everyone out there, my name is Robert Kensington and I am Shane Bryan's official biographer. Well, we're here to uh, pay a little tribute to, to my hero, uh, Shane Bryant. Um, and Mr. Kensington, uh, I first got into uh, being a big fan of Sir when I first saw the picture of Dorian Gray back in the summer of 1986 and uh, I, I just fell in love with the time period, the, the costumes, the color, the acting, and I, like I said, the rest is history. I became the biggest Shane Bryan fan in the world. <laughs> yes. It often happens in an indirect way because I first discovered Shane uh, when I purchased the Hammer Collection, which was a 21 DVD collection, the big glossy black box with gold and red lettering on it. Within it, it had Demons of the Mind, and Straight On Till Morning, which were Shane's first two Hammer films. In fact, his first two feature films, per se. Yes. And I was immediately struck by Shane, how, what, a, what an unusual, charismatic, hypnotic being he is. Yes. His acting yeah. style is so still, it's so natural, it's so organic, and he exudes this natural charisma. But when the film is finished, it is his performance, and nobody else's, that you remember. And of all those performances in that 21 DVD set, which include people like um, Betty Davis, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, John Carson, etc. But it was Shane's performances were the most memorable to me. Yes, yes. When I first saw Straight On To Morning, I just felt like, left me asking questions. You know, it was just the most, very strange, very bizarre, the most unique horror film I, I, could, I could never, ever expect. The thing with uh, Shane is his acting is completely different from the horror actors of the past. Yeah. I mean, people like Patrick McGee and Boris Karloff and even Vincent Price are quite elaborate. Whereas Shane is very still, very hypnotic and unpredictable. You never know which way his character is going to react from one frame to the next. Yes. And it, whereas most other actors would take a particular line and shout and rant and laugh and really ham, ham it up or count it. Shane is very still and very quiet. For example, yes. he inflects each word with a special color. And he uses his eyes to convey the thought of the character at any particular moment. He doesn't go in for elaborate, wild gestures and outstares the character that he talks to. Even in Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, which was the next movie of his, list, yes. he even outstares Peter Cushing. That famous scene in the laboratory. Oh, yes, I remember that one. Yes, it's all in the eyes. Right, right, yeah. wow. All in the eyes. And he says, I knew you couldn't give up your work completely. And you haven't. Have you? Yes. Silence. Yes, I, yes, I remember watching um, back to uh, Demons of the Mind. Um, the only performance I remember was, was Sirs. You know, very powerful, you know, just the, just, just amazing, magnificent acting, you know? The usual Patrick McGee, Christopher Lee, villainous laughter, I'm going to kill you stuff. Yeah. But the fact that he is crying. Yes. Actually, when he comes down the stairs, that final scene and straight on till morning, he comes down the stairs. Now, any other actor would say, ah, I'm going to kill you, all this business. Yes. He doesn't. He just comes down the stairs, and he's crying, and he says, Wendy, I would never hurt you. You yes. know I didn't want to hurt you. And he gets closer and closer and closer. Yes. And then that... you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember seeing that uh, the ending. Every time I watch it, the ending always, uh, you know, it, it just wow, it frightens me. I get chills in the back of my spine, back of the back of my hair stands up. So yeah, it, it's a, it's a huge impact. And you so, see the danger that the Shane's performance right at the beginning, when he the early scene where he's with the, the old woman, the first the first of his victims. Oh and yes. She's mashing bottles and being thoroughly disagreeable, and uh, he says, "A new game, a game." For new games, we need magic. magic. <laughs> yes. And he turns the light off upstairs, and the look he gives her, it is obvious from the look that he gives her that her days are not. Yes. And he's going to. You never see the murder, but it's implied the danger, the look in his eyes, you know that you don't actually need to see the scene of her death being played out in front of the screen. Yes, yes. You can imagine the rest. In the same way as the killing of the dog. Oh, it's yeah. You don't see any blood, mm -hmm. but the sound and look in his eyes is enough to convey the brutality of the act. 
yeah the the dog scene was very wow that 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 was very distinctive that's the word i was looking for distinctive um very uh, different uh something you don't expect something I, I don't remember seeing any other horror movie where you know the character kills a pet uh, let me know the dog particularly killing the dog <laughs> um <clears throat> let's see the, the next movie i want to talk about uh one of sir's films is uh well frankenstein and the monster from hell that was very uh to me that that's a, a lot of fun it's just a big treat for all shane bryan fans and because this time sir teams up with uh, peter cushing and it's you know it's got everything it's got it's gothic it's it's horror it's it's just you know scary you know and uh it, it, and you couldn't find a better a better duel you know the interesting thing is um is that is actually Shane's effectively that is his first lead role yes in a movie. yes because he gets equal top billing with Peter Cushing because as you know Peter Cushing's wife had died shortly before the film went into production um as a result Shane carries the picture he is effectively the, the lead you know all the way through the interesting thing about that is he makes his role as Simon Calder who begins as this quite arrogant rather um stuffy young scientist who gradually becomes a humanitarian yes because he finds that Frankenstein's experiments are so appallingly bad <laughs> It goes beyond the realm of science and all human decency. Uh, Shane's character says, right, enough is enough. Uh, I'm going to the director for protection. Yes. And his astonishment, uh, the fact that uh, the monster um, was going to be mated with what turned out to be the director's daughter, yes. um, is one of genuine shock. So you can see that character arc. Yes. And what I like about that scene is uh, what, what, what impacted me, and only Sir can do it, uh, when he puts on his jacket and it's halfway, it, 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 it's half and the other one's half, so it's kind of like a, a standstill, so like do I or, or, or don't I? Good guy roles are much more difficult to do than bad guy roles. Yes. And he manages to make the role of Simon Helder as fascinating and as intriguing mm. as any villain. <laughs> yes. Because you know that the character is not although he's basically a good guy, he has done some bad things in what he thinks is the interest of science and for the good of mankind. Yes. So as a result, he's a good person, but he, do, he does bad things. And you see him gradually realize the error of his ways as the film progresses. You see that again in his performance as Paul Durwood in Captain Chronos Vampire. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And um, I know that was like a, a small role for Sir. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, little key things to me are, are big. There's a scene where, and it's a far away shot, but Sir carries her, you know. Yes. I, 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 I like that. I, I know it's a far shot, but, God, it's those little bits that I wish, I would like to have a still, uh, a poster of it, you know, a close-up, you know. So, just that moment of him carrying Carolyn Monroe, that's, that, that was awesome. Um, another uh, film I'd like to talk about is uh, Lady Chatterley's Lover. Oh, yes. That yeah. was... A, a great role for Sir. Uh, so yeah. he brought a whole new dimension to that character of Sir Clifford because there have been many versions of Lady Chatterley down the years, mm. and most of the time, and the character of Sir Clifford is usually this sort of blustering ogre. And mm. Shane made him a much more sympathetic, much more otherworldly character. Yes, and you felt sympathy for him, not the woman. Yes, I felt a lot of sympathy for for the character, uh, Sir's character. I felt sorry for him. I I I just wanted to. You know, just talk to him like, "Hey, I'm your friend. I'm here for you." You know, whenever you need a friend, you know, I I just felt to drawn towards the character. You know, yeah. And then of course we move on to the famous scene with the wheelchair at the bar, and the uh, again that powerful look that he gives him. That's all he has to do is look at him. Yes. Then later on, of course, when she comes back from the woodshed, mm -hmm. she sees him perched like a kind of bird in this wheelchair, yes. monster, looking down at her. And again, the look says it. Yes. He, really yeah. Is. He knows. He you know he knows that something's going on. You know. That's so, it. Yeah. It really it really he really captures you, pulls you in. You know. And Sir Sir makes the character work. You know. Uh, it doesn't. You know. Even if it's a, a cameo, uh, he makes it work. He makes it memorable. And when you finish watching the movie, you just remember his performance and you want to see it again. I think while we have time left, uh, Michael, I think we should really discuss Shane's. Um, benchmark performance in detail as Dorian Gray because okay. that was the introduction to you, wasn't it? And certainly a revelation yes. to me. That was the first extended role that I've seen him in. Yes, my favorite scene of course is where he 
looks up at the picture and does his lines like how sad it is you know how sad that I shall grow old and you know he, he gives his spill and just it, just like again it's all in the eyes staring at the the, the picture and you know the close-up is on his eyes and it's so, so powerful again you have an interesting character arc here because uh, even before he looks at the picture and even before he becomes under the spell of the Nigel Davenport character you can see that Shane is portraying Doran as a dangerous individual yes when he steps down from, from the you know when Nigel Davenport says uh, I bet you're glad you met me he, he steps down from the podium takes his time turns around and said yes I wonder if I shall always Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And uh, closing our, our segment here, uh, I can honestly say, and this is not a matter of opinion, it's a matter of fact, Sir's, Sir's 1973 version of the picture of Dorian Gray is the best. The best version ever. It is definitive. And I think Oscar Wilde would be proud. <laughs> Absolutely, he, he is Dorian Gray incarnate. He is, as I would imagine, Oscar Wilde would have envisaged it. But Shane's performances, they're so fresh, they're so contemporary, and you can look at them again and again, and you'll find some new color, some new nuance. Absolutely. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful document and a wonderful legacy for future generations to enjoy. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, everyone, thank you for uh, listening in. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Michael Christian, president of the Shane Bryan Fan Group, and uh, Mr. Mr. Kinchiton, thank you very much for for taking the time to do this segment. Uh, as a you know, if this oh, little pleasure, never a chore. Right, absolutely, always a pleasure, never a chore. Um, That's so, the one. so we did this for my hero, Shane Bryant, and sir, thank you very much, and thank you all for for listening, watching.